So the first thing I want you to write down, Eric, is that I want you to write down the word listen. Uh, just write to them. So here what I mean is we're going to listen to whatever he says first. Okay? So he's going to think about what it is he wants help on, what he might be struggling with, some issue in his playing somewhere. Okay? So the next thing we're going to write down is the word ignore. Because we're going to, after we listen to him, we're going to ignore, we, we might ignore, we might ignore what he says or parts of what he says. Silent play. So now what I want to do is I want to get Gonzalo to play and not talk. Okay? So when you're teaching someone, they constantly are with the mouth, constantly talking. Right? They play a little bit and like, oh, see, see what I'm saying, man? My picking is just not good. It's like all sloppy. All right, dude, just play. Let me hear it. Just play. Two or three notes later. Yeah, see, I'm getting really frustrated. I'm feeling really tense right here, and I'm not really sure what to do about it. You know, so you need to get them to play and shut the hell up so you can just listen to their playing. All right? So get them to play sound. Next, we want to diagnose. Okay? Now we're, now we're going to be doctor. We're not going to play doctor together, but I'm going to be the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking to diagnose the problem. Because often what happens, as I mentioned before, is when, the, when your student is coming to you with a problem, they're, they're talking about the symptoms, right? So, like, I've, I've been having this cough recently. I don't know what the problem is. So I would go to my doctor and say, hey, I'm coughing. I drink cold water and I cough more. I have no idea what the problem is. So I don't want the doctor to talk to me about coughing. I want the doctor to figure out what the hell is wrong. Why am I coughing? Right? He needs to try and diagnose what's going on. Do I need antibiotics? Do I need something else? What is it that I need here? Right? Okay. All right. Next is personality type. We need to try to assess the type of personality that's in front of us. Because you teach strong-minded people differently than you teach average or weak-minded people. When I say strong-minded and weak-minded, I don't mean that they're physically strong. I don't mean that they uh, have big egos or are tough guys. That, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, do you sense that this person feels insecure? Do you sense that this person will crumble if you criticize them? Do you sense that if you tell someone to practice something, that they're going to do it no matter how freaking boring it is? Okay? Or is it the kind of person that, if it's fun, they're going to practice it, but if it's boring, they're going to play it once or twice, and they're, they're, they're not likely to stick with it. Okay? So that's what I mean by strong-minded. Okay? And you'll see why we need to determine, or, or to at least try to get a sense of, is this a weak-minded or a strong-minded student in their, in their minds? Okay? And if they're weak-minded, it doesn't mean that they're horrible, a horrible person. It just means that we're going to alter what we tell them to do next and how we tell them to do it. Because ultimately, as a teacher, what is the most important thing to do to achieve as a teacher, as far as the teaching part? Well, you guys heard me say it for the last six days. Get a result. How do we get a result? Yeah, get them to do what you tell them, right? That's the key. Right? The key isn't necessarily to have the greatest, uh, be the greatest teacher or to have the greatest teaching strategies. It's simply get them to do what you tell them to do and continue to do it and to do it consistently. That's the number one goal because until and unless that happens, nothing else matters. Okay? Make sense? Yes. All right. Okay, so next we've... We've narrowed down, or we're, we're, we're trying to determine what the persona person's personality type is. If this person's already a student of yours, then you already know. You already have experience. If this is someone new, you've never met them before, you don't know yet, but you're trying to get a sense. You can hear it in the words that he uses or she uses. You can see if they look you in the eye, if they kind of look down, kind of look away. You can tell if they feel intimidated by even just playing in front of you. Are they nervous? Are they shaking? So you get cues on what kind of person you're dealing with, okay? And the more experience you have in teaching, the more you'll be able to consistently pick this up pretty accurately all the time. You'll know, okay, this guy's pretty strong. He's, he's, he can take this sort of teaching that we're going to talk about next, or 
no, nah, this guy probably really can't handle that, and we need, to, we need to approach him and his problems in a different way. Okay? Because remember, our goal is get them to do what you say. 